So moving to agenda item number 14, appointments to the Wairaki Tourism Development Committee. I think you've all probably read this. Uh, there needs to be one elect, well they could both be elected members, but I think we discussed this once before and I think as a team we decided we'd have one elected member and possibly one non-elected member to represent us on the Wairaki Tourist Park because as you now know the Wairaki Tourist Park since I think it was the 1st of December or 1st of November last year is now all the decisions for leasing and visitor opportunities to go in there and etc. 50-50 between Taupo District Council and a place called Linz which is Land Information New Zealand which they have their head office in Rotorua. So we've found that it's been a very cumbersome process in the past when decisions were being made by the Ministry of Tourism. Uh, so after myself writing to them and negotiating with them, this is the new format. So any decisions in the Waraki Tourist Park are done in conjunction TDC and Linz and Rotorua. So we need an elected representative and a non-elected representative. I think we workshop this from memory. Um, so I'm going to need to refresh me here the two names we came up with, but uh, I'll open it up. Oh, okay, now I think we workshopped this before and it was Chris Johnson as the elected member and Martin uh, Fritz Falk, um, who's the CEO of Enterprise Light Taupo, with the two people. So I'll open the floor up to uh, any further discussion and if not, will somebody like to move those two people? Sounds good. I'll about to move this to speak that uh, one elected member be Councillor Chris Johnson and the non-elected member be Fritz Falk, uh, CEO of Enterprise taken up by Councillor Downard. All in favour? Aye. Carried. Thank you very much. Moving to agenda item number 15. I think what we'll do, team, is we'll go through these, we'll break for a cup of tea and then we'll uh, do the couple of very small confidential items we have. Uh, do the, perhaps the CEO, Deputy CEO, do the terms of reference need to be altered to, to accommodate the new structure, Your Worship? Yes, you've got to be facilitated by the Ministry of Tourism. Well, that's actually not quite right now, is it? Yes, if I, perhaps if I could speak to that. These are, these are terms of reference that have been given to us by central government. Um, so my suggestion would be that um, perhaps our, um, that's one of the matters that, that, that the uh, representatives raise um, in the meeting with um, Mr Ferguson. I thought it was our terms of No. That's a good call, late. Yeah, I, I, when I looked at it, I thought, yeah, you're quite right, but that will need to be changed by then, not us, then. Okay, so moving to item number 15, which is expenses, benefits and allowances for elected members. Um, Henry, you may wish to comment on this, but I think if you take it as read, which most of us have read it, I think we full, fully understand that um, uh, the Auditor General um, makes the rules, and that's what he's come out with, but would you like to uh, speak to it for Ariel, or anybody else like to speak to it? I can make some small comments if you like. Yep. Um, <coughs> <laughs> Essentially, um, I understand that you might have had a discussion around this issue when you were looking to adopt the policy originally. Um, essentially, the policy has come back with the note that this small amendment has to be made, um, and the requiring author or the, remun uh, the remuneration authority, sorry, um, requires it to be in there. So that is so, really where so it sits. So to cut to the chase, the Auditor General has said, as I understand it. There's no claiming of mileage under 30 kilometres. That's if right. If a return trip from somewhere was, say, 40 kilometres, you would be eligible to claim 10 kilometres. That's correct. If it was 100 kilometres, you'd be entitled to claim 70 kilometres. And if it's under 30 kilometres, you can claim nothing. That's correct. That's cutting to the chase, isn't it? Um, yes. There's been a lot of negative reaction by councils around New Zealand as to this, to the extent that the Southland Council have invited the remuneration authority to go down there and visit them and learn some facts of life out of the cold base, and that has also been supported by the other councils. Because so you just can't have a blanket that, that covers all areas in New Zealand. Well, I'll leave it to my fellow councillors, but what, what options do we have here today? Um, could we go back to what we, we, we did bounce some ideas around earlier that we just went back to a one-off payment per annum? Could we go Could we go back and visit that again at a 
you would have to go back to the remuneration authority to seek approval on that. But they are likely to say, no, we have a policy, and this is it. So what happens if we don't, uh, if no one here today decides to um, move or second the resolution? Then we cannot reimburse you for anything. We've got us over a barrel. Correct. <laughs> Um, Alan, was, did they put down uh, any, given your um, background to the 30 kilometres, why that was chosen as a, as a number? Is it just pulled out of the hat? Or, uh? I don't think so. You're able to, you're um, no, I'm not aware of any direction. any reasoning for the for the 30. There may be some, but I'm not aware of it. The only the feedback that, behind it. The only feedback that I've had from from local government people is that there has been, not allegations, not the right word, but there has been, that, that there seems to be some cloudy issues about about people claiming uh, their vehicle expenses on their tax returns and also being paid mileage and people have, have, have been saying that that's double dipping. And this issue has been around for about two years. Councillor Hickman? So is there a possibility that we can support the South Southland Authority in terms of some support? Because um, obviously we feel there is some concerns. So, what did, could you just repeat? What have Southland actually done? Well, they are getting the remuneration. Sorry, the remuneration, remuneration authority to come down to um, in the cargo yes. and take them out and just give them an idea of how far people have to travel and the nature of um, the community, etc., to try and get them to understand that blanket rules of this nature, um, with a limit of 5,000 kilometres, for example. Uh, are totally impractical. But, but sh why would you have to travel to Southland to find out? You can just look at a map like ours and you can say <laughs> to Rangi to Taupo is 52 k's, you go return it's 104. <coughs> it's nothing better than to get someone down on the ground well, are they go well, and I eyeball them. Well, are they going to go? Yes. Because you can invite them up here and we can no. do a trip to Turingia and back for no, them. They're going and I think Southland's a, a really good area for them to get the point across. Can I just ask, has there been any other logic advanced as to why they're doing this other than some people chosen to defraud their tax return? Um, That's an allegation, I was just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Sometimes. It would, it, would, it would appear. Sometimes logic and policy don't go hand in hand. <laughs> but has there been a you learn that in local government. It takes about six months. But obviously they've, they've dictated this should happen, but have they given any um, background as to what the reasoning is for it in terms of handling this? Well, through right. local government, which is your conduit, you have uh, Lawrence Jewell, he's the mm -hmm. local government, uh, they're our conduit to central government, so that's where we should actually take our concern, if there's a concern, because they act on all councils, on behalf of all councils, and they go and knock on the minister's door. That's just simple. to clarify, they deliver this, but there's no explanation as to why yeah. this has been done at all. Okay. You know, you're quite right. Um, maybe, maybe. Could, could Alan just perhaps make a further comment on this? where it says le legal considerations and it says council must continue to use elected members allowances and expenses policy 207 until a new policy is approved by the RA and then adopted by council or what happens if we don't if we continue to use 207 that's what I just what's asked, and I think the answer was the you can't pay us, is that right? Or you can't reimburse Well, it says the council must continue to use the elected members' allowances and expenses policy 207 mm -hmm. until... Well, I mean, has it got any meat, or...? or um, is, it, uh, is it worthless? Uh, um, <laughs> Yes, you do have that policy in place, but you have to you have to see that policy of the remuneration authority every year, and they're not going to approve your policy of 2017 without the 30k threshold. Of it. And if they don't approve it, you cannot reimburse no, the councillors. Right. And, and what's more, they have indicated actually to us that while you're using your old policy, we should also still be looking at the 30k threshold. Okay. So they're not going to re you know, prove your old policy again. Okay. okay, look, what about a resolve here? We're going to have, we, we, we've got, you've got no option. It's a mechanical item, is to move it, second it, 
and accept it. But what about we get a letter to local government to, because they're supposed to be working for us, we pay our subs to local government New Zealand to sort out our problems for us, and I think we need a letter to go to um, Lawrence Hill or Eugene, Eugene, um, Eugene Bowen, he's the CEO, and give us a please explain. It's their job to sort this out. Can I just add to this um, that I imagine at least part of the reason for doing this is a cost-cutting move. And I'd just like to note, this is probably the sixth time I think I've been in a discussion about the subject. It seems the rules of the game are now being changed again. Somebody should really think about how much it costs to keep 20 people in a room having a discussion about this on six occasions. Well, some councils in, in South Island now are operating on Skype. Of 100 k's away, they're, they're a council. They just they're, they're in their chairs on Skype, just sitting at home with the thing, and they that's how they, it's the modern technology. But I mean, do we have to use a motor car to get everywhere? The, the discrepancy is it's more the threshold that's set is what amuses me. Like we all understand, we talked about a few times about mileage and like one k here and two k. We all went, oh god, that's rubbish, and we all agree with that. So they're sort of trying to clear that issue up to me. It seems that the threshold for a country district like ourselves is a bit high, and I mean that's that's. Yeah, that's where the issue is, I think. It's it's an explanation of saying, where did 30 come from? You know, is that ring fencing Auckland and saying, well, out there, 30 k's can do the whole of Auckland, but if in a, you know, a country district like ourselves, it doesn't quite work. But we agree with the well, majority you've probably, of probably had a little bit on the head. Everything that's going on in this country at the moment is, is, is knee-jerk reactions from Super City. So that's probably what is happening. But we, we have no option here. It, you know, like, all we can do is write a letter to, the, to, to um, lo your local government and ask for it, please explain. Um, Councillor Downer? Yeah, I'll give my two cents worth. I think it's absolutely disgusting. I think, you know, a lot of people here give up their time, um, their place in, in work and family um, to, kind, to come in here and do their best for the community. And when, you know, the um, authority uh, then puts a 30k uh, slap on you, I know, as uh, Rex said, we're not talking about, you know, just here and there, but it adds up for councillors like um, Turangi, Mangakino, Keith. You know, we're talking 30 k's each time they trip. You take that over a year, how many times they come in, not only just for council meetings, but for other related things to do with council, well, I think it's shocking, because really they get paid peanuts, you know, for the amount of time and, uh, that they put into it. So that's my two cents. Um, but that's, yeah, yeah, well, that's fine. And that two cents are accepted, but I go back to what I said before. We're talking about the mileage. The wages are the wages. But look, all we can do is write a letter to local government, unless somebody's got a something else they want done other than that. Or you, perhaps you could go to your local MP or something, I don't know. But I think local government is the place to go. Back to that too, Rick. So look, we'd have to pass it otherwise, for example, straight away. Um, you don't pass this here today. Until it's resolved, you don't claim anything yeah. or get paid anything. And so for us local ones, it doesn't, it's not so important, but if you, or you really that are out of town, that it's important to you, I'll say, yeah, as well. <coughs> What's the point of passing it if it's going to be automatic anyway? Why are we have to? Oh, well, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think I've got this clear. If you don't pass this suggested resolution, and I'll support you because it doesn't affect me. I don't. I'm not on a warranty, but and I'll support you if you don't want to pass the resolution out today. But please be clear that that Mr. Morrell cannot pay you any of your weekly way, your, reimburse you for anything, give you any more money until such time as the Auditor General. You have adopted the policy, which is the um, <coughs> policy's called. Yeah, we can well, beg to differ, but we have to pass it. <coughs> we can beg to differ, but we have to pass it. I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd just like to pass it and get on with it, but I would like a letter to go to these people which asks them to explain. Okay. Now, you need to go to local government New Zealand. Well, That's where your powerful body. That's your voice. Yeah, but I think your voice. But can that not come from the Taupo District Council? Because would that not carry a lot more weight? Yeah. As opposed to individual members approaching them? Mayor, we we can probably approve it, but, but make our comments to the remuneration authority. Um, but, but well, I hear that you're not happy. I can. Do we not that. happy or something? I tell you what, you you, you, could, you might be able to do if you want to take a stage further, take a remit to the local government conference this year. Well, yeah, but that comes later, doesn't it? And that that's possibly the whole. You know, other th authorities as well getting together and taking the remit. 
Um, I'm just going to suggest that you actually add a third uh, to, your, to your resolution, which would be along the lines of um, that council rights to local government New Zealand requesting, um, requesting um, expressing council's dissatisfaction with the remuneration authority's policy and asking them to investigate this matter. And explain. I mean, there's got to be reason that they've done this and they haven't given us the reason. Mm -hmm. I'd take it a step further. I think their whole handling of this matter since this council came in has been appalling. Mm. Who are they accountable to? Anyone? No. I think their lack of logic has led to a huge waste of time and resources and mm. I think it's totally mm. unacceptable that we're all sitting here having exactly the same conversations mm. as if it was a And these conversations are probably be held right now in New Zealand. <laughs> Right. Any efficiency gains that might have been achieved from this have been wiped out. And it's probably the, the yes. smallest matter on our agenda and it's taking us the most time because well, I, 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 of, of you know, their I, lack of attention. You need to stick to, the point, stick to the issue here. Look, it, it, it's plain English, read it one time. Um, you know, the background of the draft expenses, benefits, allowance for elected members policy was adopted by Council on 10th of December 2010 and sent to the Remuneration Authority for approval. We have to do that. That's legal and that's all binding. The, re the uh, Remuneration Authority did not approve it because they are imposing new rules on all councils for mileage payments. The Remuneration Authority requires Council to add the following to reimbursement of mileage over a threshold distance per event, 30 kilometres with only the distance above the threshold <coughs> qualifying for payment. Now, you move that, you second it, and you pass it, or you just, you know, everything's frozen until you get it sorted. I'll move the resolution. Move, Councillor Heffern. Anger? Councillor Heffern, can we add that uh, piece in? Oh, sorry, could you just read that uh, piece you want to add in there? I'm sure the Councillor Heffern will want that uh, yeah. added. Um, rights to local government New, New Zealand to express Council's deep dissatisfaction. Um, with the remuneration authorities' policy and um, ask them to investigate the matter and obtain an explanation. Okay, cool. That's fine by you, uh, the mover, seconder. Is that you, Councillor Johnson? All in favour? Aye. Carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving to meeting dates for, for February. Okay, so you want to take this as read? I'll just go around the room and see if anybody wants to change anything or wants to call meetings about anything. Um, there is one. Oh, we'll get back to me in a minute. Let's start around here. Anything Anything on these meeting dates, Councillor Hickman, for you? Well, I have, um, unfortunately, on the 14th and 15th, I have the regional transport meetings in Hamilton, in Worship. Uh, I would like to record my apologies for those two, mm -hmm. to uh, the workshop and the council. Oh, okay, yep. What workshop were we going to discuss that then? Is it been... Um, that's another... That oh. that's another... Yeah, that's another... Okay. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's not quite been confirmed, but I think it will be on those two days. No problem. And, uh, Councillor Johnson? Uh, just one thing, I think there was an email went around raising um, possible meeting with the walking access group or something. Yeah, and I, on the 14th. I think, yeah, from memory it might clash with these couple of meetings I've got to attend, but I mean, hey. Okay. Uh, just let um, Ms. McCabe come in here regarding that, because I think that's really important with some issues of on representation there for sure. This walking access commission is the people who are negotiating land access, wasn't it? Land access where we can put tracks and things, isn't it? That's yeah. the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah. Set up by national district. So uh, Mark Nearson is um, intending to be in the district on on the on the fourteenth. Um, uh, now we've there've been five councillors who've confirmed that they could be available at twelve o'clock to have lunch with him on that day. Um, we have been um, emailed back to him suggesting that that would work. We just haven't heard from him. He's he's apparently not answering the cell phone at the moment. But I think probably what we do is actually book it in. Um, and uh, we'll make sure that that's that we'll send it. Well, if you're available, come, and we'll be guaranteed to have some of us there. That's for sure. But that's an important one for the district: the access to get these walking tracks and things. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the 14th of February at this stage to be confirmed? Yes, at 12 o'clock between 12 and 1. Before my apologies, I cannot make the 8th of February. Which one? 14? No, the 8th of February, the Council Community Board. Do you have any time we're a community board? You're not on that. Oh, sorry. No, you can stay away, that's all right. Councillor Crate. Yes, I'm okay, yes. I just, I, clarifying what uh, Anne's just said, we, that means we only have an hour for this walking one. Because if we have to well, turn up on what Anne said, it was going to be a lunchtime meeting. Um, yes, so you, the, there are two meetings planned on that day already that are booked in. Um, now, this, they will not necessarily involve all of you councillors, so you could actually, I mean, presumably if, if this gentleman's got time available, you could carry on. Um, but the Lake Taupo Protection Trust meeting is at uh, 1 o'clock on that day. Oh, right. That involves um, Councillor Henderson and um, his worship. Yeah. Well, uh, he's coming at 12, that's yeah. fine, but I'd like, him, I'd like him to be told that we do have a lot of issues here with access, walking, etc. cetera, that um, you know, we'd like as much time with them as possible. And if yeah. Councillor Henderson and myself have to excuse ourselves from a meeting somewhere else and come back to here, that's not a drama. It's okay, that's fine. I'm okay. Well, I'm coming to that, yep, because that's not set in the sun. I'll talk about that in a minute when I get around to my turn. Okay.